greetings blurbs and this right here is one of my favorite models of ibm ps2 with the case off at the moment but yeah i've done a full video about this thing over on the lgr main channel and this is a ps2 model 90 xp 486 and this is a micro channel architecture machine and that was ibm's proprietary bus their 32-bit upgrade of sorts <laughs> i mean it was an upgrade but you know you had to pay ibm to use it and so instead of using 8-bit eight, uh, eight or 16-bit ISA, or even ESA, which was sort of uh, an anti-MCA thing used by all sorts of different companies, IBM went with microchannel architecture. And as such, uh, it was more expensive and cards were not as common for it. So if you were wanting to use this nowadays for things like gaming or, you know, just whatever, just screwing around with different stuff, finding like sound cards, video cards, and things like that, that are uh, not the few that IBM put out, or like uh, Creative Labs had a Sound Blaster and there was even an Adlib MCA card, but these are all exceedingly rare, like for things like that. You can find these kind of cards pretty much all day long, token ring adapters and all sorts of junk. Um, things that I'm not necessarily interested in right here. They got their uses, but not for what I want to do. I just want to play some stuff on a 486 on this PS2, because I like the machine. So, thankfully, there are some options that have come along recently to make that happen. And this one right here is an implementation, or really a derivative of one of those options, from Texelec. So this right here is the Resound OPL3 MCA, and this is an AdLib compatible sound card for microchannel architecture machines like the one we have right here. <laughs> Thank you. For one thing, looks fantastic. Um, and I did buy this myself. They didn't send it to me. It's not sponsored or anything. I just like their Texelec uh, designs and, and the things that they offer. You know, this is a $60 uh, sound card, which is so cheap compared to the real things, you know, like the Sound Blasters and AdLibs. If you can even ever find one for sale, you, they're going to go for an absolute ton. But yeah, this right here is derived from the Plaid Bib by Tube Time. I actually heard about that, I think, last year, <clears throat> and uh, was kind of keeping a, a distant eye on it. And I'm like, oh, you know, that'll be a cool thing. But then I noticed this was for sale on the Texelec web shop, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to buy it. So I did. Here it is. And so, yeah, check it out. It's got a YMF262 OPL3 sound chip on there. Oh, yeah. FM synthy goodness that you'd see in, like, a Sound Blaster 16. So, uh... That's pretty much what this is. As much as I would love to use an original creative Sound Blaster, or even like a Sound Blaster 2.0 here, it's a 16-bit ISA thing, so no go. Not in this machine. There were PS2s with, you know, non-MCA had ISA slots in those, but anyway, this is a cool option. And uh, it's also worth noting that it didn't come with this back bracket here. I actually took it off of an old token ring card uh, MCA one. Because you can see it has these little blue things here, and the back bracket on the PS2s, at least these, the MCA ones, are kind of funky, you know? Look at this. It's got all this going on. So the card is just a card on its own, but it comes with these holes that are specifically made to fit something like the token ring card if you have a donor. And I mean, who doesn't? If you're collecting PS2s, you've probably got like four or five of them. I know I did. Uh, anyway, so yeah, just took that, put it on here. Um... It was a little tricky. I had to use some of these 4-40, uh, like half inch, and then I trimmed them off. Screws there and a nut on the end. Because they had these little, like, clamp down metal pieces holding this bracket on there. I found that a little tricky. So anyway, that's what this is, and that's why the uh, the hole here is kind of large for the 3.5 millimeter uh, headphone, or really speaker output jack right there. It doesn't quite fit, you know. This isn't made for it. But uh, it does the trick and gives it so that we have a rear bracket to put in here. So let's do that. Uh, this will be interesting. I haven't actually tried it yet. I I've never put a sound card in here because I never had one that was compatible until now. As um, far as I know, it will require just a little bit of setup. I mean, MCA is sort of kind of plug and play, but at the same time, you still need things like Maybe not the diagnostic discs. I don't know if this is the right disc, but you need discs to configure things on these PS2s. Gosh, I have this one. One of these will do it. Yeah, there it is. It requires running the reference disc for the system in particular that you're using and uh, the ADF file for each adapter installed. So there is a download for that ADF. So cool. We'll just use my reference disc in that file and 
hopefully that'll be all we'll need for games and such. Let's, uh, let's get the ReSound 2 installed. So that's going to go in here, where I'm, I don't know where I'm going to put it. Thankfully, it's all like spring-loaded <laughs> thumb screws on this entire thing. PS2s are a pleasure to work on. Let me just move this out of here. Like, even that's got a nice weight on it, just a clunk. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really like working on these, so I'm glad to actually have a card to put in here. And there is like the rear bracket for this. Look at that. It's like a, I don't know, like a miniature... My model train set construction piece or something. Yeah, it looks like you go on a crane, like a one one hundredth scale. Anyway, so we're gonna stick this in here or try to anyway. Hopefully I've gotten the bracket the, the bracket on there correctly. This is a first for me. Okay. It's kind of a tight fit, but so it goes. Huh. There we go. So it's got these little teeth that go around the thumb screw there. Uh, those little, little bits. So I was just trying to get those in there without bending them. But uh, it looks like that's pretty much it. Check out the uh, eBay listing if you if you're curious about this. I mean that's where I uh, initially saw it, or this version of it anyway. Like I said, there's the one by tube time, and then there's this you know nice long write up on the text like ebay web store about the card what's involved with it what it does so i'm gonna get this thing plugged into some monitor and peripherals and uh, try to get it set up and man run ad lib sound on a ps2 model 90 xp 46. okay let's just go ahead and turn it on here and see what we get in terms of messages or if there even will be. I've got the reference disc ready to be inserted down there. And uh, that little ADF file is also copied over to that same disc. Just made a backup of the one I already had and added that to it. So hopefully that'll be good. There we go. Adapter configuration error. I have installed an adapter. So yeah, that's that. The description file for the adapter was not found. So that's what that ADF is. So. Go ahead and insert the disc. All right, well, it says it did things. <laughs> so I guess we'll see. Hopefully it's as easy as that. This is honestly the first time I have tried to add an expansion card to an MCA bus machine. Okay, so just running the self-test diagnostic thing on startup here. And this list shows the devices that the testing program detects is being installed, so... I'm not seeing it. <laughs> Maybe it is, and I'm, I, I don't know. Maybe I don't know how it's going to show up in here, or even if it will. I'm just going to say the list is correct. Eh, seems good so far. So uh, let me just see. What do I have on here in terms of games? I do have Duke 3D, Keen 6, SimCity. Let's just see if we can get the uh, Duke 3D ad lib music to play before we had no sound whatsoever on this computer so what is this the shareware version hey all right <laughs> that's awesome Oh yeah, dude. This was absolutely silent before. No sound effects, no music. Of course, I still don't have sound effects because this is just an ad-lib compatible card. It doesn't do Sound Blaster PCM sound. But I mean, come on now, we got, we got music. I don't know how I made it up there. <laughs> I think it was a little forgiving of my jump. It 
excellent. Dude, that is, that is awesome. Just straight up working. Ah, uh, good old shareware version. All right, let's try, uh, let's try Keen 6 since it's on here. Sorry for this shaky, wobbly little desk. Oh, uh, this, this is on uh, some wheels at the moment because I was moving it around, so it's kind of wobbly. Anyway. So we should be able to get ad lib sound effects as well, so that's cool. I, oh man, stupid copy protection. Let me find the manual, it's just up here. <laughs> Here we go. Don't make illegal copies of this software. Yeah. C-E-I-L-I. -E there we go. <clears throat> Alrighty. Okay, that's got some weirdness. I wouldn't think it needs SVGA compatibility, but I guess it does. I am running it off of the, uh, what was it, the XGA2 card that's in here, so. Anyway. Totally works, and it's fantastic. You hear that? Sounds great. And. <laughs> All right. Of this trilogy of Keen games, this has got to be the one I am least familiar with. In fact, I've only ever played a few levels of it, I think. It's been, man, a couple of years since I've even played this one. Dude, that sounds perfect. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, as it should. I mean, it's a YMF262. Let me try Planet X3. I haven't actually installed that on this machine yet. Yeah, I'm happy this works as well as it does. Got a little concerned there for a second because it was like not showing up in the setup screen or maybe it was just under some other name. I don't know. Oh yeah. So yeah, of course we do just have music here as well. Uh, sound effects are like through the PC speaker, so let's just see if you can kind of hear that. Yeah, it's coming out down there. Yeah, there's the PC speaker down there. But we got ad lib music and it sounds fantastic. Anyway, uh, this totally works, and it's awesome. All right, another one I want to test out here because I pretty much always test it out with ad lib compatibles, and that is Zargon, or at least the shareware episode of it. <laughs> Intriguingly, it has decided that digital sound blaster sound effects are on, which uh, doesn't have support for that, but okay. Don't have enough free conventional memory. How? Yeah, 580k free. Just turn off the Sound Blaster sounds. We don't have them anyway. Yes, play the music. Still doesn't have enough. What kind of garbage is this? Trying this again with even less loaded. 617k free. If this doesn't do it, I don't know what will. Nice. This game always runs a little loud uh, with the ad lib, like pretty much full blast for what the card can do, but it doesn't sound like it's clipping or anything or distorted, which is good. Of 
course, it's trying to load Sound Blaster. Uh, so I'm gonna need to turn that off. There we go. No delay. So yeah, no sound effects because it's not a Sound Blaster. Those are all digitized in this, so. Ad lib though sounds perfect, as far as I'm concerned. Which is exactly what this card is supposed to do, so. Heck yeah, man. Ah, oh, this is awesome. Otherwise, there's just no sound in so many different games I'd like to play on systems like this. Other than a PC speaker, maybe. But uh, that's about it. Bring a parallel port. All right, I'm getting sucked into Zargon. Time to move on. There's one other thing that I was wanting to try on here is to see if it could do, uh... okay, so, you know, AdLib typically is just FM synthy music and such, but it can also do like a sort of a bit banging type of method where you can get PCM sound effects. Stunt driver should let me do that. Let me grab that really quick. Okay, everything's installed. Let's see if it works. So we got the PC speaker doing the speech there and uh, copy protection, I think it's this. So sound, make sure that it is, yeah, because it's, it's just set to PC speaker. Let's do ad lib card. Wow, it's really quiet, but uh, it is working. Yeah, it is all the way up on my speakers which are powered amplified speakers and there is no volume control on the card itself but yeah it's totally working and get the microphone right up on it So yeah, it's working. It's just unbelievably quiet. There's no volume adjustment in the game. I'm not aware of a, a way to change anything in DOS because it's not relying on like, you know, drivers or software to change the sound. Other stuff was fine. All right, well, that is it for this look at this card. Uh, it works, does exactly what you'd think it would, uh, which is great. And maybe a few well, little quirks here and there with certain games, but that is to be expected regardless of your choice in ad lib card often just down to the software itself uh, so anyway do check it out if you're interested uh, it is a thing that exists and that's it for this video thanks for watching